What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart. That's right, and you know what's crazy is we are back here at Copart. We're in the, uh, the red eye today, but uh, we are back here at Copart, and I think this is just the craziest thing ever to me. I'm gonna show you this. Look at the time. It is 6.01 p.m. I have been here for almost four hours waiting on my car and it's nowhere to be found. It's nowhere to be seen. Loaders are still bringing cars out. As you can see, four hours guys. And I'm not, I'm not here to complain. Like that's, that's not what it's about. This isn't about sitting here complaining about woe is me. It's just, uh, man, Things here are, they're kind of rough right now. And I already know when I come out here, you know, I'm gonna spend a couple hours sitting here. I'm used to that, it's no big deal. I plan that into my schedule every time I come here to get something. But this is the first time, first time, this is the first time ever in the history of me doing these videos that I have been here after they closed. They closed an hour ago and my car is still nowhere to be found. I'm sure it's coming, I'm sure it's coming, but uh, yeah, four hours though. Wow, that's that's uh, that's just insane, man. That's an insane amount of time waiting on a car. We're going to uh, come back as soon as they roll that bad boy out, and we're going to do what we always do. We're going to try to drive it home. Remember, this is a 2006 Buick Lucerne that's listed as enhanced. It doesn't run and drive, but in a previous Copart walk around, we got it running. So we know that it runs. We know that it's got cold air. We know that it goes forwards and backwards. It's got 180 some thousand miles on it. Maybe it's got a bad transmission. I don't know, but we're gonna find out together here in just a minute. All right, guys, there it is. The 2006 Buick Lucerne with 186,341 miles on the odometer. It's got a set of Nankang Cross Sport SP9 tires, full set. Tires look new. It's got a very nice gold pearlescent paint job. Paint looks nice. It's got a few little dings here and there, but I mean, nothing major. No major dents, no uh, nothing. It's got a nice Carfax report. It's not a salvage title. It's a clean title. It's a donated vehicle that somehow ended up here listed as a non-runner. Why that is, I don't know, because, you know, in a previous video, we found that it actually does run and it had cold air conditioning. It's not hail damage. It's got the 3.6 liter. It also has a very, very dead interstate battery. But take a look at the interior here, guys. It's actually in really good shape. Look at the door. I, I You just wouldn't look at this car and think, you know, 180 some thousand miles. You just wouldn't. It's a very nice looking car. It smells good, the headliner is good. It is clean inside and out. I mean, take a look at this. She's a nice looking car. Now, I don't know what car this would be comparable to, like the Chevy Impala or maybe the Malibu or something, I don't know. Let's, let's go ahead and fire it up. It fired right up fired right up make sure the e-brake is off it is we got the air conditioning on uh, the important window works and the next important window also works both windows work great you got the wood grain all over the place I like the gauge cluster the gauge cluster actually looks really really nice I like that a lot you got your automatic headlights and well, I don't know what all these other options are over here. Not a clue. You got your center stack over here, all your information stuff, fuel economy, that type of thing, gauges. You got your radio and then you got your climate control and your transmission. Now, a lot of people don't like the 3.6 liter V6, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, I, I love it. I've never had any real issues with the 3.6. I'm going to go ahead and pull this booster pack off. As you can see, the alternator is charging at 14 and a half volts, so really, really good. What time is it anyway? We finally got this car and the time is, oh wow, it's uh, 6.14 p.m. <laughs> I feel bad for these other guys that are still stuck out here, man. The loaders too, I'm sure they're ready to go home. 
All right. We got the Hellcat over there, and I guess it is, uh, it's time. It's time. But well, it looks like they're gonna be here a while too. There's still a lot of trucks here. A lot of trucks here. We got the dealer tag on the car. Show you right there. So we're legit. Let's get up out of here, man. Oh, we're about to find out why it was donated. I'm gonna let you guys guess down below what you think. Are, are you thinking it's a uh, bad transmission or maybe it's an overheater? I don't know, I don't know. Otherwise, yeah, the car looks good, the car sounds good. I guess we're, we're just gonna have to find out. Let me make sure I got this air on cold because it's on like 73. We need, that on, we need that on something a little bit colder. It's got heated seats. Doesn't have cooled seats, unfortunately. We'll turn that on by level. There we go. All right, let me buckle in and we'll get on the road. Okay, here we go. Shifted into second and third and fourth, it felt like already, wow. Okay, we're gonna have to really, really, uh, well, I mean, I'm not gonna smash on it or anything, but you know, let's get around this corner here. Service theft system. Here we go, you ready? All right, it shifts just fine. <laughs> it shifts just fine. Temperature is good. It's not a transmission issue. That much I can guarantee it. Transmission shifts great. Shifts great. Wow. I'm listening for lots of, you know, like clunks and clanks and noises and honestly, not bad at all. I don't have any warning lights on the dash as far as like check engine, no TPMS, just service theft system. I don't, I don't know what that's about. I'm not even sure exactly what that means, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the way the car runs or drives at all. Air conditions blowing nice and cold. Steering wheel is a little bit off to the left, but that's okay, so am I, and it doesn't bother anybody. It's doing just fine. You can let go of the steering wheel, and she cruises straight as an arrow, man. So far, so good. So far, so good. We got the Hellcat back there in the rear view. The steering feels nice and tight. The brakes are really nice. Like, the brakes are super tight, and I don't feel any vibration, no pulsations, nothing. Yeah. We, <laughs> it's $675, guys. $675. Uh... What am I going to do with it? Well, you guys know this car is probably destined to end up right back at auction. Ooh, there's a car broke down right here. All right, let's hit it one time. Let's hit it one time. Like, no issue at all. Uh, shoot, we're doing 60. Whoa, slow your roll there, car. Good, nice. 60 miles an hour. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, the speedometer's off is what it is. It's tires the wrong size or something. <laughs> uh, we, we slowed it down a little bit there. Yeah, there we, there we go. A little bit better. Guys, unless this thing starts overheating in the very near future or, or misfiring severely and bucking and puffing smoke or, or rods knocking, I don't know, man. Unless this car does something crazy, in the very near future, uh, we stole this. We stole this for 675 bucks. All we had to do was go out there and walk around and check it out and verify that it actually runs and drives even though the listing says enhanced, listed as a non-runner. Yet here we are driving it down the road. No issues in the world, man. I'm gonna jump off here for a minute, drive it around a little bit, we'll come back and, you know, we'll see if we're still good here in a few minutes or, you know, if something catastrophic happens. So it's taken me a couple weeks to win this car. They keep asking $1,800, $1,900 for it. And I was just like, nah, that's not going to happen, man. When I when, The way I feel about it is I'm the high bidder on something. I shouldn't have to pay more for it 
if I'm already the high bidder, you know what I mean? Like, that, that just doesn't make any sense to me. If I am winning the high bid, why do I need to pay more for it? That's, you know, but I understand some people put a reserve on their cars, and when you do that, you know, you gotta meet that reserve or the car doesn't sell. So, not Copart's fault is what I'm trying to say. It's the, the seller of the car trying to get more money out of it. And you can't really fault them for that. Everybody wants more money. So far, guys, <laughs> we've put uh, several miles on it now. It's almost 100 degrees outside. At, yeah, at this time of night, it's almost 100 degrees. It's 97 degrees outside right now. We're averaging about 17 miles a gallon just cruising with the air conditioning going. Transmission is still shifting flawlessly. It's riding flawlessly. And the temperature gauge is uh, nice and well below the half mark. Uh, Anticlimatic? Well, we're not home yet. <laughs> we're not home yet. And we also know for a fact uh, it's probably going to need a battery. More than likely, she's going to need a battery. But I'm going to hook the tornado up to it. I'm going to see if we can salvage the battery in this. Because if we can, that'll save us at least another $50. Let's continue on our way to the house. See what happens. All right. Well, we made it to the car wash. I figured the least we could do for this little thing is spray it off and try to make it look a little better. There goes Jessica. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's spray the dust off this thing, man, and see if we can make her look just a little bit better. And then uh, we'll get it back to the house so we can get the stickers and stuff off of it, the writing off of it. Uh, so far, guys, nothing. Like, no issue, no problems, nothing at all. And the, uh, the warning light for the theft deterrent system, I believe that was only because the battery is probably bad. I'm betting the battery probably has no volts in it at all. It's living off of the alternator right now. And I think that's all it was because it went away and it hasn't come back yet. So here's the reality. This thing runs and drives great. Now that it's washed, it actually looks pretty dang good too. There are no warning lights on the dash still. It's just sitting here purring. I've left it idling for over half an hour just to see if maybe there's a possibility it wants to get warm or some weird lights are gonna come on or anything and nothing nothing it's just sitting here purring like a kitten no issue man no issue at all look at it that is a beautiful car right there well some of you are going to disagree with me and you're going to say there's no such thing as a beautiful buick but i think it's a gorgeous car i'm about to shut it off we got most of the riding off too most of that came off with the car wash the sticker came completely off at the car wash so not much work left to do there about the only thing that <sighs> needs to be figured out is uh oh, by the way the radio works really really well um headlights suggested all right we're gonna pull her up into the garage here gently and i probably need to hook up the battery charger yep the dash lights work looks like the headlights are out there working too Man, I don't know why somebody donated this. Oh, wow. I didn't realize I got that close to my bike. Oh, wow. Uh, who? <laughs> oh, that's a story for the insurance company, isn't it? Hey, guys, I totaled my bike by running my $675 Buick into a $30,000 motorcycle. Sorry, $25,000 motorcycle. Okay, headlights work. It looks like the corner lights work tail lights working yes yes like <laughs> it's just it's another one of these steals man it's another one of these steals and you wouldn't have known about it if you hadn't gone out there and checked it out for yourself you wouldn't have known if you hadn't gone out there and just checked it out for yourself look i don't know how well you can see the dash but there's no warning lights on i'm going to turn those headlights off okay no warning lights there's a there's a park indicator right there other than that that's it and that's not a warning light it's actually in park we could probably turn this off i guess you just push i don't know how to turn this off maybe oh there's off right there okay there's off it's off temperature gauge is good everything is good she's happy let's give it a little throttle 
she purrs like a kitten, man. Pop the hood, take one last look under here before we shut it off and uh, find out if that battery is gonna work or not. I'm uh, I'm gonna place bets that the battery is probably done. Good pressure on the cooling system. It's full of clean oil. Listen to her run. I know the screen is green. If you look over there, it's not. I don't know why it does that, man. Low light, I guess. It's, yeah. This is a hell of a win. A hell of a win for $675. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, but what was it out the door? Because that's what matters. Out the door, it came out to a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks out the door. Ready to shut it off? Let's find out. Uh oh. Yep. Nothing. Dead as a doornail. And I can't get the key out because it died. Yeah, you can see now we got weird. There's a check engine light popping on, but the key's not even in the on position. Yeah, battery is toast in this one, guys. So she's definitely going to need a new battery. Not a big deal, though. I will hook up the Tornado 4000 and we'll try to bring that battery back to life, guys. And if we can't, it's not a big deal. We'll just get a battery throw a battery in it, be good to go. It's gonna be a side post battery. In fact, I think I have one of these down at, oh, it's a top post. It's a top post, hold on. I thought I had one sit, I do. <laughs> I do have one over here. The Tornado 4000 saved this one. And it's going to be, the positive is on the top left. That came out of the 57 Plymouth. Let's see, is the positive on the top left? It's not, it's on the top right figures okay we'll be back when i figure out what i'm going to do about this and we are back we're back to find out if this battery came back to life because if it didn't then we got to buy a new battery and i'm really hoping we don't have to buy a new battery i tried putting this battery in it <laughs> this doesn't fit this one is just a tad too tall and for whatever reason, I think this may be a little wider. I don't know. This battery absolutely will not fit in the car. And that car is difficult to put a battery in to begin with. Uh, this battery, you got to turn it on its side and wiggle it in. And you got to, it's, it's a pain. It looks to me like the Tornado 4000 here. I'm telling you, this thing is a lifesaver. I mean, you can't make this up. This battery was completely shot in the 57 Plymouth because it's been sitting for a decade. It's good now. It's back to life. This battery right here, as soon as we shut the car off after driving it all the way home, the car was running and charging all the way home. You shut it off, battery's completely shot, man. You couldn't get it to do anything. Uh, uh, you might get a little light bulb to come on on the dash. That was it. Now, I'm willing to bet that after running this for about 24 hours, this battery's back to life, which would be, again, another at least $50 saved on a battery. This is battery number four. If it comes back to life, that's $200 I've saved. This, I'll have a link for this in the description below. I can't guarantee that it'll save every battery, but so far it has saved three batteries. If that one comes back, that's battery number four. Saved me $200. This product with my discount code down below, 31 bucks on Amazon Prime delivered to your door. $31, come on, man, come on. We'll unplug it, I'll unplug this too. I tried putting this one on it because this is a much bigger charger. This one aired out like every five minutes, it would just crap out and it wouldn't even touch it. It would not even touch this battery, it didn't want nothing to do with it. This battery is in bad shape. Let's, uh, let's get it over here and let's drop her in. And I guess we'll find out together if this battery is uh, good enough. This car is pretty much ready to send down the road, guys. All we, all we got to do is get a good battery in it, and she's ready to go to auction. Now, I'll tell you right now, if I go through all the hassle of putting this stupid battery in here and it's no good, I am going to be kind of upset because uh, this really is. You got to turn the battery on its side like this, seriously, on its side. You got to move this thing out of the way, and you got to wiggle the battery around some more while you're moving this piece up here out of the way. Then the battery twists and tries to fall. Then you got to move this back out of the way and twist the battery a little bit more until eventually 
yeah, eventually the whole thing just kind of falls into place. Whew. So the battery's back in. I didn't bother bolting everything down yet because there is a good possibility that battery is still no good. Uh, that's one of the worst batteries I've ever run across. Uh, so now, moment of truth. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey! That's a hell of a lot more than it was doing before. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be damn. I'll be damn. I know the video quality sucks right now. I know the screen is green. I apologize sincerely for that. It's the lighting in this garage, man. It, it does that. It doesn't do that at AR headquarters. Service theft system. That will turn off. It seems like once you replace the battery, it gets kind of pissed off. Listen to how good it runs. Like I said, guys, the battery may not be perfect, okay? It, it's, it's just not perfect, but I can say this. It went from a battery that was 100% no good, that could not even start the car. You couldn't even turn the key on and get a light like this coming on. The battery was so bad, it just wouldn't do anything. It starts the car now. And the lights are on. Look, I, the lights out there are still on. The lights in here are on. And we're going to take the key, put it in the ignition. It's got that GM wiggle. And it'll fire it right up. It sure will. It sure will. Let's see. Driver's door jar. It still says, says service theft system. I don't know what is going on with that. But I can tell you this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the way the car runs. It doesn't prevent the car from driving. Nothing. Nothing. There she is. There she is running like a top. So, I, I, the proof is in the pudding, guys. Completely junk. Let's, let's not lose this stuff here. Completely junk battery. The little $31 Amazon special battery restore thingy majig has now made it a battery that you can put in a car and use it now does it mean that the battery is never gonna have to be replaced no of course not that battery will have to be replaced at some point but it bought you a little bit of time you know it bought you a little bit of time and for me it saved me 50 plus dollars on a battery for this car i don't mind sending this car to auction knowing that the battery is not as good as it should be but at least it's a good battery you know, it saved me 50 bucks. And the next person that gets the car, yeah, eventually they'll have to replace the battery, but not right away. You can use this thing for quite a while. I'm sure that battery will last quite a while before it's gonna need to be replaced. And there you go, man, there you go. We'll probably button this up. Let's take it out for one more ride. Maybe go put some gas in. I like putting fresh fuel in these. You don't know how long they've been sitting. We'll go put some fresh gas in it, fill the tank up. We'll fill the tank up for the next owner. Hey guys, this car is ready to go to auction. All right, here we go. I filled the tank up with fresh gasoline, non-ethanol. And the only thing I have left to do to feel secure about selling this car is take it out on the highway and just verify that the wheels don't fall off, the brakes don't fall off, rods don't start knocking and things of that nature. Better to put myself in it first and find out myself than to put some poor unsuspecting mother or children into it. Okay, well, my fiance's in here with me and she's pointing like, wait a minute, what did he just say? Uh, yeah, sorry, babe. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna test this out ourselves. I have faith in it though, because I did uh, have it up to 60 at one point and it felt fine and the brakes felt fine, but you just really don't know a car until you get it up on the interstate. I'm hoping this guy, this guy's not going to go very fast. So we're going to just kind of get stuck behind this slow truck right here. Wait, he's moving. He, come on. There you go. I know it looks like on the camera he's a long way away, but like for me, he's right there. Oh, hi, truck. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So brakes from 60. Um, brakes. <laughs> The brakes work really well. <laughs> the brakes work real. My fiance is looking at me. She looks a little angry. <laughs> the brakes work well. The roads here are absolutely horrible. I mean, absolutely horrible. I want to show you guys. We are going 
uh, 65 miles an hour. All right, I'd like to see if I can get past this guy, honestly. Passing gear here. There we go, now we're going 70. I'm gonna set the cruise control, make sure the cruise works. My foot is off the gas, and yes, we're maintaining 70 miles an hour, no issue. The car is nice and smooth. The brakes are good, the air conditioning is good. I've mentioned that about a thousand times. You guys know how important air conditioning is to me. We're averaging 18.1 miles a gallon right now, 18.3. Now that we're on the highway, the fuel economy should kind of skyrocket there. This is a great car. This is a great car. And I know I say that about a lot of the cars I pick up. I, I just have a knack for picking some pretty decent vehicles. I really do. That's not to say we're not going to get a dud here and there. It's, it's going to happen to anybody. Anybody's going to pick a dud from time to time. Even the most experienced uh, dealer is going to pick a dud. But uh, all I can tell you is for me lately, we've been on a roll, which means we're bound to pick up a dud sometime in the very near future. We're going to keep going for another mile. We're currently 19.6 miles a gallon. I expect to see that pick up into the 20s pretty quickly. Uh, but as you can see, no warning lights on at all. The theft light is not on anymore. It's not complaining about anything. The car seems very happy, and it is riding like an absolute dream. Well, guys, we made it. I've driven it, uh, how far now? 17.1 miles, averaging 21 miles a gallon, which isn't great, but I mean, we only went on the highway for about two miles. The rest of the miles that we put on this has been city. So, you know, obviously city miles are not going to be nearly as good as highway miles we're going to go ahead and shut it off let's take a peek in the trunk i think that's the one place we haven't looked yet was in the trunk oh well, we got backup lights so that's good uh oh uh i thought there was a key for the trunk oh boy well then there must be a button somewhere right we got windows, we got locks, we got mirrors, power seat, which works. I just used that. So where would the, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You've got the, your, your lights over here. We got your information center right here. Eject. This is your radio. Then we have your heated seats and your climate control. I don't see... I don't see any buttons to get into the trunk. Is it, oh, look at this, we got a cigarette lighter in here. That's that's an interesting place for it, in the console. Okay, well I thought maybe there would be a, uh, maybe there'd be a button in there. I guess not, maybe it's in the glove box, right? Is it in the glove box? It's not. Um, you gotta be kidding me, man, right? Okay, well, guys, I want to stop the camera for a minute. I'm going to see if I can find the find the trunk release here. Well, I'm certain if it was a snake, it would have bit me. Honestly, I never did find it. Uh, I don't know where it is. Uh, I actually climbed through the back <laughs> seats, and there's this uh, emergency release right here. Yeah, that's, that's how I did it. So I never did find it. All we got back here is... Uh, Conventional 5W20 and 5W30 oil. What do we got under here? And a spare tire. And it does have the jack underneath it, so that's good. Okay, well, that's a... Uh, I mean, that's a wrap, guys. There, as much as I would love to get some more content out of this car, there's... There's nothing else. It runs, it drives, and now, even after sitting with the lights on for quite a while, I'll bet it still uh, fires up. It does. The battery is a little weak, but she fires up. Automatic headlights come on. Let's close the door and see if we get a theft warning again or if that's finally gone away. Yeah, no more warnings. So the theft deterrent warning has gone away. No lights, and hopefully you can see full tank of gas as promised. She will need a battery, probably sooner than later, but the battery gets you by a little bit longer, I think. This is great, guys. This is great. I, I love the car. I do. I love the car. 
Listen to how quiet this thing is. It's a beautiful color. I don't know what you'd call it, like a champagne sort of gold. You can't even hear it running. What a magnificent car. First one we've had on the channel. We've never had a Buick LaCrosse on the channel before. So, you know, brand new car. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I think before we get out of here though, why don't we fire up the Hell Air? Let's go grab the keys. Man, we got a couple beauties right here, guys. The 68 Pontiac Tempest. I know some of y'all are gonna be sitting there going, wait a minute, the what? That's right, the 68 Pontiac Tempest. The 2021 Harley Davidson Road King. Looking good as ever, man, good as ever. Both need a bath, desperately. It don't matter though, both of them look sick. We're gonna let those sit there and run for just a little bit. We got keys. I got some parts for the uh, 68 Tempest coming. Uh, in fact, today we just received the Bilstein shocks. Is that how you say it? Bilstein or Bilstein? I don't know. Someone have to correct me down below. Bill Stein, Bill Steen. We got a full set of B6s for the front and the back. That's going to help the bottoming out issue that it's got. We also ordered the right size tires for it, and I kept them 14s because 14 inch tires is originally what came on that car. So I got the right size tires for it coming, and I think between the uh, taller tires and the new Bill Steins, I think she's going to be good to go. We're going to start up the Hell Air right now. I just want to come back in here, man. The AC is ice cold. I'm double checking the temperature. I had to clean up my garage and uh, this car has been running for, well, it's been sitting here running for quite a while now. I just want to make sure because this car is getting ready to go to auction. I want to make sure there's uh, no issues, man. I don't want any surprises. I don't want it to overheat or cause somebody any drama. So uh, yeah, that's right. That Buick is about to go to auction. We'll have a separate video. Uh, I'll, I'll title it something like, um, flipping the 2006 Buick uh, LaCrosse for big profit or something like that. Something with a nice catchy title, you know what I mean? All right, we're gonna pull this into the garage. Ready? Oh yeah, every time, man, every time. No issues. You could take off in it right now, cold. Cold, she hasn't been run in quite a while and uh sucker go down the road man she will yes see what i mean <laughs> she's got no issues getting down the road oh man it's a great old car let me flip this bad boy around real quick i'm pulling her out for a reason we'll put it up in the garage I don't know if you guys can tell, but it looks like we might be uh, might be getting some storms here. And uh, when I remember this car doesn't have a top, I like to I like to put it <laughs> I like to put it in the garage. I really uh, I don't like leaving it sit out here in the weather. There we go. Oh, it's a little dusty in here. It's a little dusty. Yes, sir. There we go. Come on in, bad boy. I'm making some room so we can fit some of these cars in here. All right. Now, with all of these cars running, uh, it should be very easy for me to die of carbon monoxide poison. Although I do have the side door open, I got the front door open. But we got the uh, 55 Hell Air sitting in here, purring like a kitten, man. Purring like a kitten. Good old car. Good old car. Let's pop the hood real quick. Oh, there she is, boys. Yep. It runs absolutely great, it does. I know you can't see it, but there it is. But I must have put a new battery in it. I should take that battery out, huh? Five to 21? Yeah. There she is, the Harley. Oh, 
baby, baby. I need to go ride this thing. I haven't been on my bike in uh, probably a couple weeks now. I definitely need to get on that and take that out for a spin. I took this one out last night. Believe it or not, guys, I drive this thing almost daily. Almost daily. There is rarely a day that I don't break this car out. Uh, usually, when I break it out, though, it's uh, normally it's nighttime <laughs> because it is it's pretty hot out here man it's pretty hot the car does have working air conditioning but it's just like with the top up i don't even want to drive it with the top up i want to drive this thing with the top down we'll let these things sit here and run for a little bit i guess we'll go outside and say goodbye to the buick lacrosse well guys that's going to be a wrap on this video for the Bu the buick lacrosse she turned out to be a pretty decent old car man rides good runs good shifts good no issues that i can think of other than eventually having to replace that battery i think we scored on this for 675 bucks winning bid a thousand and i think fifty dollars i think it was 1050 out the door who knows what it's going to bring at auction hell it may not bring as much as it brought when uh, we bought it but when we bought it, it was an enhanced non-running vehicle. Now, it is a run and drive. So I'm happy with this. I hope you guys enjoyed the Buick. It'll be at IA soon, and when it sells, we'll come back with a profit or loss video. I don't think we can lose money on this one. So this one better be a profit. All right, guys, with that, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, drop your comments down below. Don't forget to share the video on your social media platforms to help me out if you feel like it. I would appreciate it. I'm gonna get out of here, though. I got a lot more to get done. You can hear all those engines running in the background. I gotta go shut all those bad boys off. Thank you to each and every one of you for continuing to support the channel, for watching the videos. I really do appreciate all of you. We'll come back with a video on this, uh, you know, profit or loss. And uh, with that, we're out. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.